Hello everyone, welcome to Developers Checkpoint and in today's video we are going to learn about the database transactions and we will focus mainly on the read committed isolation level. So what we are going to learn in this video, we are going to learn about database transactions. We will briefly discuss about the database transactions and after that we will understand about the strong and weak, weak type of isolation levels and one of the weak isolation level is the read committed isolation level we will understand more about that we will see what can be the internal implementation of the read committed isolation level that can vary from database to database but we will try to have a higher level understanding of that and after that we will see the example of the read committed isolation level using the mysql database okay so without any further ado let's dive into the video in order to understand about the transactions we have to understand about the acid properties of the transactions so what does the acid means in terms of the transaction so in terms of transaction acid is a acronym where a stands for atomicity c stands for consistency i stands for isolation and d stands for durability so what does these things mean let's try to understand one by one so atomicity specifies that the transaction must be atomic in nature it means it will be executed as a one entity and it will be rolled back as a one entity there will be no probability of a partial execution of the transaction consistency means that a transaction must not hinder with the consistency of the database all the constraints that we have put on the database will be respected by your transaction Isolation means that each and every transaction running on the database will see it as the only transaction running. It will not be impacted or it will not be able to see any of the other transactions hindering the execution of this transaction. And finally, that durability means that each and every operation must be durable. So if there is a power failure where the machine shut down and something went wrong, then the result of the, then the outcome of the transaction must be persistent and durable and it could not be lost. Let's try to understand about the, what are the type of transactions. So there are two type of isolation levels in a transaction. So one is the strong isolation level and the other one is the weak isolation. So what do we mean by this? So we came across the acid properties of the transaction. So how much respect we are giving to those properties, for example, how much consistency we are doing, how much isolation we are doing, how much respect we are going to those asset properties, what is the implementation, internal implementation of those asset things, it specifies the isolation level of the transaction. So for example, we have a strong isolation level, which means all the transaction running on the database will run in a serializable manner one transaction there will be only one transaction that will be executing on the database and all other transactions will be put in a queue and will be executed one by one but if we go with the serializable isolation level the performance of the database will be degraded because it will take a lot of time for execution of the lot of transactions so in order to make our system more scalable people generally go with the weak isolation level what does these weak isolation level do these isolation level make some compromises with the acid properties they they do acid properties but the implementation of the acid properties varies from database to database and they might be able to run more transaction in parallel in this video we are going to understand about the read committed isolation level so what are the properties of a read committed isolation level read committed isolation level have two properties one is it will not have any dirty reads and the other one is it will not have any dirty writes okay so now try to understand what do we mean by dirty read and dirty writes okay so for example with there are two transactions running on a database in one of the transaction we are trying to set a value of x equal to 2 so we are starting the transaction at this point and the transaction is being committed at this point so if the other user is trying to read the value of x before the start of transaction he will read he will be able to read the x equal to 1 now when another user is trying to come when the transaction is in progress he will not be able to see the uncommitted value of the transaction. He will still be able to see the value of x equal to 1, which was the previous value of the x. And once the transaction has been committed, the user will be able to see the latest updated value. So what do we mean by no dirty reads? So by no dirty read means the values that are updated within a transaction will only be visible to the client once the transaction has been committed. Okay, now let's move ahead to the next property that is the no dirty writes okay so for example we are setting the value of x so well initial value of x was 1 okay and 
the there is a transaction on the database which was trying to update the value of x equal to 2 now suppose uh, another client came and it tries to write a value of x equal to 1 again in that case it will not be possible as the database will be running a transaction on the particular row it will put a write lock on the database and if there is a write lock on the database this client which is willing to update the value of a of a row when the transaction is already running on the row will either have to wait or it will fail okay so in this case the database will not have any dirty writes so what do we mean by no dirty writes so whenever our transaction is running on the database and updating a particular values those values will not be overwritten by any other transaction okay so these are the two properties of the read committed isolation level we will not have any dirty reads we are not going to have any dirty writes okay now let us see that if we have to implement the read committed isolation level how we are going to implement that okay so what we can do we can put a row level lock for the write operation so for example if we are having two rows and we are going to update this row so then we are going to have a lock on this thing so if another client came and tries to update the value of this row this write lock will save the value from being updated the other thing what we can do is have the multiple versions of the doc so for example we are we were having a row where the key was one and the value was hundred and we can have a version number on the for example the version number of this row was zero so whenever we are in the process of this transaction and a transaction is in and the transaction is updating some values we will create a new document so in that document what will be the things the key will be the same the value will be the updated value and we are also going to update the version number so, okay so in this case so if any client comes and tries to read the value of key equal to one it will get the value from the version equal to zero and once the transaction has been committed these values will be deleted and the new document will be created with the updated value let me try to explain this once again so suppose for example we are having this row with the key equal to one and value is equal to 100 and if we are trying to have a transaction on this row so we are going to create a, another value for this where the key will be same and the value will be the updated value and this initial value will be the version equal to zero this latest value will be the version equal to one if the transaction is in progress and that client tries to read the value it will get the value from the version equal to zero while the version equal to one will keep on updating the values as per the transactions once the transaction has been committed this value or will be migrated to this value and all the clients will be able to see the updated value so this was the high level understanding of the read committed isolation level now let's try to execute some sql queries and see isolation level in action so now i'm on my terminal and i will try to run a sql server on my docker machine so i will run firstly pull the docker image of the mysql once we have downloaded the image i will run the docker run command to run my container okay so after that i will go to the logs of my docker container to see the password generated by the mysql here i can see that this is the password that is generated by the mysql okay now what i will do i will search into inside the my docker container i am going to run commands inside my docker containers now i'm inside my docker container in this screen in the screen to the right and I will try to run MySQL command. So I am going to use MySQL as a root user and hyphen p for the password and the password is this thing. My MySQL instance is up and running and I got connected to the client as well. So firstly what I will do, I will change the password to of the root user to the some simpler password. So this I have updated the password here. Now I will do the same on the first terminal. Okay, so I am going to search inside my machine. I am going to run MySQL as a root user and provide a password. The password is new password. I will copy this from here and hit this thing. Okay, so we are having two instances of MySQL. What I'm trying to do here is to simulate concurrency here by running two instances of MySQL client. Okay. 
so firstly i will create a database so for example let's create a create database trans okay and i will use this database for now in this database i will create a new table okay so here also i will use trans database okay now i'm going to insert few values in the table so i'm inserting record one the record two with the person id two will having 2000 and the record three also okay now if we run select a strict from persons we can see that we are having three rows and with the person IDs and the account balance of each and every person. Okay, so now let me clear my screen. So we have these record in our database. So firstly, I will set the isolation level of my client. So I will run this command. This means that I am changing the isolation level of the date of the transaction to read committed. And once that's done, I will double check that what is the isolation level sum so i can we can see that the isolation level of this transaction is the read committed okay now we are going to start a transaction okay so we will do by start transaction okay so what we are going to do here so firstly let's have a look at the data again so select a strict from persons so now let's try to update the value of person id one okay so I will try to update persons that uh, account balance equal to let's say 2000 here where person ID is equal to one okay now let's have a look at so this transaction has been started but not committed here we have written a update transaction query now let's try to read that value from the other client what we can see here is this client is reading the older value of the person id one why because this transaction has not been committed till now okay so let's try to commit this transaction okay and now we are going to check the values again now we can see that the value of uh, the person id one is updated because the transaction has been committed and we are going to read the updated value okay so we here we have seen that there was no dirty reads in case of this transaction now now let's try to move ahead and have a look at the write operation so we are going to start a new transaction again and in this transaction i am going to well update the value of person id 1 from 2000 to 3000 okay and from this terminal i am going to update this value to 4000 okay let's try to update this value here we can see that this transaction has not been committed till now it's still running and if we are trying to update the same row from any other client this command is not executed this query is in waiting state this query will be executed once this transaction is committed so i will commit this transaction once this transaction has been committed with the sql was able to execute this query and now we go ahead and check the values we can see that the value of account balance updated by this client is reflecting okay so whenever the client was having a write operation or a lock on the database no other clients have to wait while that transaction is committed and once that transaction is committed we can go ahead and update values as per our need okay so guys that's for the video thanks for spending your time here please like share and subscribe the video if you like the content thank you